Wonderful. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us today to the Public Art Pre-Qualified Artist Roster for the Office of Arts and Culture. Um, I am joined here today by my colleagues, um, Rebecca Johnson, um, Public Art Project Manager, and Jason Huff, um, Public Art Program Lead and the Interim Director of Public Art. I'm Maya McKnight, and I'm the Project Manager for the roster um, as part of the Office of Arts and Culture. Shop today, we're going to talk a little bit about um, our office and what we do. We're going to talk a little bit about why the city has a pre qualified artist roster. We're going to discuss how to apply and what makes for a strong application. And then finally, at the end, we're going to take um, a series of questions from you in terms of this project application and um, any questions that you might have. With that, I'm going to pass it to Jason Huff. Uh, hello, and thank you all for joining us today. We're uh, excited that uh, yeah, we have a, a great uh, response to our workshops, and we hope that uh, you can learn more about the program, our roster, and uh, yeah, always feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, we're always happy to talk with you about our program. In 1973, the city of Seattle created its 1% for Art Ordinance, becoming the second U.S. city to develop a public art program. Through the ordinance, the city accepted a responsibility for expanding pub the public's experience with art. In nearly 40 years, the city has installed artworks that has enabled us to better understand our communities our, in our parks, community centers, and neighborhoods. Through our temporary installations, over 400 permanently cited artworks and 3,000 portable works, our collection has grown and we continually reconsider how we embrace our past and look to our future. Go next slide. And so we have our commitment to racial equity. Um, Seattle Office of Arts and Culture commits to an anti racist work practice that centers the creativity and leadership of people of color and the most. Those most impacted by structural racism to move for to move towards systems that benefit us all. We also acknowledge that we are on indigenous land, the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people. The collective response as a city and a nation to police brutality and the and all of the you know uprisings that happened throughout our nation over the summer has moved our office to again reconsider how systemic racism influences how our program functions and what steps we need to take in order to dismantle the barriers that have made it difficult BIPOC artists and communities to access and engage in our public art public art projects. Um, as we move forward with our artist roster with our boot camp program, uh, we are constantly working to challenge the status quo and to make sure that we are being responsive to the needs of the people that we serve. So um, this is something that we take very seriously. And if you have any questions about what we're doing as an office, as project managers, uh, as we work towards more equity, um, we certainly uh, encourage you to engage us in conversation about this. Thank you. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about why we have an um, artist roster and what it is. Um, we select artists through um, the Office of Arts and Culture for our public art programs through open calls, invitationals, and the use of our pre qualified public artist roster. Our roster is a jury pool of pre qualified um, artists selected to develop a permanent or temporary or freestanding or site integrated art artwork. Projects can vary in size, scope, indoors, outdoors, spaces throughout the city. Um, when do we use the roster? Typically, it's when we have an expedited timeline. It's not typically a project link, but rather we need to get through our selection to get an artist on board sooner or later. It also includes staff capacity and what the project needs. Um, we frequently ask the roster artists to write a statement of interest for specific questions that then accompany the qualifications that you submit during this application process. Um, emerging roster projects typically range um, up to $40,000 and established roster artists typically range up to $200,000. 
An emerging artist, as far as the application, is an early or mid-stage artist in a, that is in their career and is making the transition from studio to public art. An emerging artist definition doesn't refer to the age of the artist or even the specific number of years in their career. So for this specific application, an emerging artist is defined as a visual artist who has been awarded three or fewer commissions from public agencies, corporations, or other organizations not exceeding $20,000. Um, these are individual budget amounts and not cumulative. Um, eligibility for this emerging artist is limited to um, residents of Washington State. And so as part of this application, we acknowledge that the stated, the stated definition of a step of emerging has its limitation. And so as part of the application, we invite you to add a little bit more additional information in regard to this kind of somewhat rigid definition um, to be able to provide a little bit more information. Just that within these parameters, there's a lot of vari variables um, that you might have as part of your own individual career. Um, some examples might be so, like, say, for an emerging artist, you receive one commission of $30,000, but other commissions in more of the $5,000 range. We invite you to submit that as part of your application if you're submitting for emerging. Um, if you have another example, would be if you have larger commission examples, but we're part of a team and feel like that you're within that emerging artist scope that you're going solo, um, that would be something that you would further explain as part of this application. Um, another example would be if you have a lot of commission that you've sold individual artists, but, uh, artworks such as paintings that might exceed that $20,000 mark, but you're really looking and in going to, into the public art field, um, that would be a um, and have examples at a smaller scale, that would be a really great example to be able to share as part of the application. And apologies on my on my side for the PowerPoint. Um, similarly, the established artist definition is an artist who has created an extensive body of independent work and has had several permanent public art projects. Again, this doesn't this doesn't refer to the age of the artist or even the specific number of years in their career. Um, but as part of this application, we've defined it as a visual artist who has been awarded three or more commissions from public agencies, commissions, or other organizations over that twenty thousand dollar amount. Um, the eligibility for this is um, re residing within the United States, so this is a national call. Um, and so, and again, acknowledging that these definitions are rather rigid and there's a lot of vari variabilities, we also invite um, applicants to submit additional information to be able to explain kind of the eligibility. Part of this roster that hasn't been done in prior years, um, we are excited to be able to offer this roster publicly accessible way. Um, we have made the switch to a software called Submittable that has something called Gallery View in which um, parts of the application will be accessible and viewable through our website for individuals to be able to access. We receive so many inquiries from individuals, other agencies, businesses um, looking for recommendations for artists. And we are really excited about this opportunity to be able to showcase your work um, in this way. Um, and so there is a series of questions as part of the application that is for this um, publicly facing forum that will not be part of the, app uh, the um, selection process that I'll go through in a fair amount of detail as we go through. So this is just kind of a screenshot of what that publicly facing roster will look like. It will be a link on our website in which you will see kind of a general description, as well as a whole series of images and names associated with those images. So for this one, this is just a um, mock application that has my name along with some pictures of bridges throughout the area. You'll see here that I can search by name, I can search by keyword, I can also sort by artistic practice, primary media, and race and ethnicity. So these are items that will be part of a supplementary application in which we'll be able to use that within the database to be able to showcase your work um, externally. Um, this is kind of a secondary. If I click on that first image of the bridge, I'm taken to a long screen that showcases the variety of examples that I have uploaded, along with various information as well, title, year created, etc. As long uh, as well as a series of questions that I've answered as part of the sub supplemental um, application. This is something that.
required as part of the application. This is something that is not um, won't be considered as part of the selection process, but is purely a, um, an opportunity and a tool to be able to provide to the artist to be able to share your work with um, a, lot, a wider audience. In terms of timeline, um, here we are today on Thursday, October 8th, 2020 at our application workshop. Um, this call opened uh, on September 28th. The deadline for this call to apply is at the end of November. Selection process will happen through January and February. Um, and then artist notification as well as the launch of the, on, the public online portal will happen in early spring 2021. So how to apply? So as part of the application requirements, we ask that you submit a letter of interest, a biographical statement, three references that will only be used and called upon if you are selected for a future project, and then up to 10 work sample images. As I mentioned, you'll also be asked to complete a series of application questionnaires that will be towards the sorting and um, information collected for that online portal and not part of the jury process. With each of these, the application requirements, letter of interest and biographical statement, you're invited to submit those either written or in video audio content, and I'll get into that a little bit more. So diving into the content of the application, letter of interest, we ask that this is about 300 words or 90 seconds if you choose to do a video audio. Um, so we ask that you provide a statement describing your artistic practice and experience in the public art field. A biographical statement, so about 200 words or about 60 seconds. This is a replacement of kind of, of the traditional resume and is a space where you can summarize your experiences as a creative individual. Three references, um, name a statement of your relationship with that individual and a contact information. And again, these, these folks won't be contacted unless you're selected for a And then up to 10 work sample images. Um, we suggest not submitting more than two images of the same work if possible. Um, and composite images are not recommended where you take multiple angles and put it all in one. And we find that very confusing for the jury and somewhat hard to read. Um, this is really, this is the, these work samples are really your opportunity to um, take the jury through a visual showcase of your work um, and include a variety of information to really tell the story of your experience in a visual manner. Selection criteria. So the selection criteria for participation in the roster is strength of past works in a variety of expressions and media, experience working as a public art artist in private or public settings, the content of your letter of interest. For the emerging roster, experience creating work and demonstrating interest in and or creation of 3D public artwork. And for the established roster, experience fabricating and installing temporary permanent artwork. Ability to complete a project on time and budget. And priority will be given to artists from historically underrepresented communities, including communities of color. The selection process is a one-step process. In, um, versus a two-step, which would be overall selection and interview, which is um, typical in project-based selection panels. So as I mentioned, in January and February, a uh, convened panel of art design professionals, artists, and experts, city representatives will review an applicant work samples and select a variety, varied list of emerging and established artists who will be pre-qualified for future projects. As part of the application process, we use a software template through Submittable. Um, this is accessible both through the email that you might have received, it's accessible through our website on the opportunities link, and it's also searchable through Submittable. And I've copied the URL in the upper left-hand corner here. I'm just gonna take kind of step-by-step -step of the what you will see and what to expect as you go through the application process. Um, so first step, if you haven't already, to either sign up for account or sign in for account. This is a non-fee base, this is free, and they'll just require an email address and basic contact information for you to do. Um, once you're in and have an account, you will be faced with a very large amount of text that goes through every um, possible um, 
um, angle of this project. So don't, please don't be daunted by the amount of um, text that is used to explain this project. And um, we're just trying to kind of get it all out there for you to be able to reference. Um, following this, you'll be asked to update your um, address and confirm that it is accurate. From that point, you'll be asked to enter your name again. And then at this point, you'll be given the option to either opt in or opt out of this publicly accessible um, ro roster forum. This does not impact your eligibility at all. You do not have to. It is purely a benefit if you if you so seek. Um, at this point, you'll be asked to if you're applying as an emerging artist and as an established artist. Each of those little radio buttons, if you emerging artist, you'll be given a, a, a series of two questions. As I mentioned, kind of that supplementary background of like for you to provide additional information if you seek to provide it. And it will also ask the eligibility question if you are a Washington State resident. Similarly, if you hit the established artist radio button, you'll be given that same kind of text box to be able to provide further information um, in regards to eligibility. And um, and then also verifying that you're a resident of the United States. The next series of questions are just on kind of marketing and outreach. We want to know how you heard about this call so we can continue to reach wide audience. And then you'll be given a series of two questions. One, if you choose to submit in written format, you will be given a whole series of text boxes and you'll see the text box as well as in kind of the lighter gray as a summary of expectations right, al right alongside of that. Um, we suggest that you do this in a document similar to Word where you can do a word count and then just copy and paste into these text boxes versus writing right in there. If you hit video or audio format, you're, you'll instead be given a series. Excuse me. You'll be given a series of um, opportunities to upload your files within those. Um, and so, just please note that the intent of the um, uh, inviting audio and video submissions is not for a highly produced, um, glossy video. It really is. The, with the intention of providing option for people who feel that they represent themselves better verbally versus through written language. For example, applicants whom English is a second language or any other considerations. If you feel more comfortable representing yourself this way, please do, but it is not intended to additional work or to create a very um, glossy video. Um, so in addition, so this part of this is part of the application questionnaire and a little bit of a repeat that uh, we're asking for a brief artist statement. This is a slightly different from what we asked for before as part of your biographical statement as this is the part that will be publicly accessible. So this is going to be posted alongside your images in that publicly accessible roster. And again, if you choose that you do not want to be part of the roster, these will not appear as part of your, uh, your application. That we also ask um, you to identify your area of expertise and artwork types, and so you'll see a series of check boxes, um, as well as you'll see to the right of that in the light gray, kind of a further explanation of what those are intended to encapsulate. So, for example, we list 2D art, and so the examples provided are murals, decals, mosaic, photography, images that are reproduced on existing surfaces. So, those are kind of key points that you can read and kind of see how you feel you want your artwork um, represented. Um, there's also the opportunity to select more than one. If you work in varieties, please feel free to click um, up to two or more objects. Um, additionally, what is your primary media? There's a whole series of lists, assemblage, carving, fabrication that kind of fine tunes that a little bit. Um, and then the invitation to, in, um, to submit a URL, a web link as part of the public roster so people can click and find more information. This can be your personal website. This could be a social media 
link, um, those are all okay. If you don't have or choose not to submit, that is okay. And what will happen if someone is interested in getting in contact with you, um, my name will be associated with this roster. They'll, they will reach out to me and I will forward that request directly to the email that I have to you on file. I will not distribute your personal information to them if an inquiry, but versus, versus forwarding the inquiry directly to you. This is an example of what that publicly accessible roster will look like images of the work and as well as answers to the questions we will as part of the application we have phrased it in terms of question after we have the applications in we're going to rephrase it a little bit to have it make better sense um, in terms of someone viewing it from the outside and so instead of please provide a personal link to your website we'll, we'll likely say something like artist website here Colin. Additionally, we have some um, questions about racial and ethnic categories in which you most strongly identify. And then towards the end, this is actually part of the required application is all of all examples. And so you're invited to submit these in JPEG, GIF, or, or PNG format. And this is a required part of the application. Additionally, we have a series of demographic questions. Some are some are repeated from the prior part, um, but this is for internal use only. This is really just to kind of get a um, track who is applying and to be able to better serve our audience. And so not required, but definitely encourage you to fill out this part of the application as well. Last but not least, after you go through those series, um, there's a little agree to terms of use so you can click that and get the whole long litany of terms of use um, and at this point you can save your draft or you can apply um, some items of note that I kind of wanted to bring out is that this is a new software and new system for our office. And so there, I'm, I'm anticipating there will be a fair amount of um, massaging and adjustment as we go. And so just want to be upfront about that, that we are really excited about using this new software and being able to provide this publicly accessible way. Um, acknowledging too that all the um, choices for future projects will be from the back end. Of the of the software not from this publicly accessible outward facing um, roster opportunity um, we also are thrilled to be able to offer the opportunity to update your information annually once a year we'll send out a note saying um, anything you want to update images contact information website um, we'll open it up invite you to adjust those adjust that information to be able to keep it Keep it fresh and relevant and representative of your your career tra trajectory um, i also just wanted to say a lot of these images i just took um i was in, took intending to kind of show the wide variety of types of projects that we do versus like roster projects that we've done in the past we do do a lot of um, larger scale permanent we also do a lot of temporary works like the example here um, was actually a project um, that was initiated right when COVID um, stay home order began. From your front yard, we worked with a series of artists that were on a on the current roster to create some imagery that we made into yard signs and put throughout Seattle. So this is a great example of a really kind of smaller scale project that we went to our roster, invited artists, paid them for their work, and were able to do a public a temporary public art project in about a month and a half ish time frame. And um, I wanted to also invite my colleagues at this point. Is there anything as part of this prior presentation that you wanted to point out or mention um, in terms of my comments or elements? Um, can you confirm that when someone uploads an image that they can write a short description or provide a title or details about that particular project? Yeah, absolutely. Your images, um, you'll enter that image and then there will be a series of text boxes as well so you'll be invited to enter title um medium your created um commissioning agency um and i think there's one more great and thank so, you any others no okay great some kind of broad scale application tips that I would um, I would like to share with you today. So please, please, please don't wait till the last minute to apply. Um, you know, 
technology can go horribly wrong, software can go wrong, family emergencies can arise, um, we don't accept late applications, please submit early. Um, I mentioned previously as well. So if you're doing written responses, please um, I would suggest doing this in Word or a similar other similar type document to be able to do a word count, do a spell check, um, and then just cut and paste this into the text boxes within your application. Um, I always recommend to have somebody um, you trust that is knowledgeable potentially in the field to both review your responses for grammar typos content, as well as to take a look at your work samples and descriptions that you want to submit someone with um, fresh eyes to be able to kind of help and give pointers along with it as as you go. Um, so. Also know that the process is relatively fast. We expect a fair amount of applications to this project and the selection panel reviews these um, at, within our current process, they'll review them first at home and then at, we come together virtually as a group. But the amount of time spent on each of the visual images is pretty quick. And so like this is a prime example of why you wouldn't want to um, use a work sample, for instance, that has a composition of many images within a quick time frame. It's just too much visual information to compute to understand and compute quickly. And so really think about it in that terms. How can you visually communicate your story of your career, your your point of view in some really strong um, work samples that can be easily understood at a pretty rapid rate. Um, and so I'll also say that our opportunities are competitive. So even if this one isn't the right fit um, and aren't selected for this one, please apply again if you don't um, get accepted into this roster. Um, I'll also note that we put together a couple years ago now a, a video that has some applications tips it goes through um, some of the things I just said that if you have time and uh, are interested we encourage you to go to this um, YouTube link it's it's accessible through the Seattle Arts and Cultures YouTube channel as well that concludes some of my presentation I did receive one question ahead of time that I just wanted to visually share um, the answer is was that if we had an online database of Seattle's public art collection um, to be able to see kind of the diversity of projects that we do and and the hooray, yes, we do. Um, and so within the seattle.gov slash arts, um, if you click public art and then to the civic art collection, um, you will be taken to a database. The URL is also listed at the top of the screen, seattlearts.emuseum.com slash collections, in which you'll be able to see the wide variety of different projects that we do. Um, permanently said works, portable works. I will mention, however, that a lot of the temporary work that we do is not included within this. Um, which is a fair amount of the work that we do, but I'm thrilled to, um, this is a relatively new database and really thrilled to be able to share this with you. And with that, that does conclude my, um, my presentation. Um, we invite you to, there's a Q&A function, um, as well as a chat through the Q&A, we'll be answering questions. <coughs> The first question that I did receive, um, and Jason, I might ask you to answer this, is what is the best way to structure a letter of interest um, in terms of do I focus more on art practice and philosophy, or do I focus more on goals and my past artwork experience? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think definitely for starters, I think you know, one of the what what we often see in our applications uh, during a, during the selection panel is that a lot of artists um, tend to use their artist statement uh, in their letter of interest, and you know, just want to make sure that people really understand that you know the letter of interest is to make the selection panel aware of your interest in a specific project. So I think, you know, a lot of oftentimes, you know, I get people just drop in their statement. And so during the review process, you know, often panelists are just, you know, they're they're not they're they're not, they're not they don't understand the artist's interest in the project. And so I think, you know, I definitely want to address 
all the issues that go that are that are, that are in the uh, call for artists so that they you know the panel knows that you fully understand what is needed for the project and why you are the best fit for that so i think it's more of kind of going into the um philosophy was it philosophy and art practice philosophy versus goals art experience yeah i, mean, I think it's a balance of all of that um of just knowing that again sort of telling why you know in your letter of interest you're trying to tell you're trying to convince the selection panel that you're the best artist for this project and so you definitely want to have your philosophy and if it's definitely in alignment with the project or what it is i mean if it's uh, you know say for a project that deals with wastewater and drainage management um you know it definitely if 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 you have a you know if your work deals with environment you know environmental issues then you sort of align your beliefs with the project and then with your experience i think you also want to show like if you have projects that have uh that are similar to what uh the product that you're applying for then i think that it's good to include that so that people get understanding that they know who you are why you are applying for this project and what your work shows how you know, how it demonstrates how you're uh are a good candidate for that project okay i would also just use your description area underneath your images and your work examples to make that work for you to why it's you're relevant to these specific projects too. use that as a tool for yourself okay. so received another question um it is it viable for out-of-state artists to participate in the quick turnaround for roster projects mm -hmm. and becky do you want to can you repeat that one more time? I was looking at the chat. Oh, sorry. Is it viable for uh, um, for out of state artists artists to participate in the quick turnaround for roster projects? Um, absolutely. Um, the artist roster, regardless of where you live, is really based on looking for the best artists in kind of a quick manner and using that pool that we have of qualified artists, um, rather than thinking about um, we may need an artist roster for something local or like really quickly to finish a project timeline. It may still be a, a longer timeline that we can very well um accommodate artists from all over the country great um and so i have one question um some some of us have already done public art projects for the city through the office of arts culture we are now required to reapply in order to get on this new roster why not just transfer our information and solicit press fresh images or updated artist bios instead of having our artists reply um so we have a variety so we do have a current roster um that was formed three ish years ago and we asked artists to reapply to this new roster in order to demonstrate interest as well as to be able to upload new images that are relevant as i mentioned we have an entirely new system that we're working with and so prior prior application materials aren't necessarily transferable. I'll also say that inclusion on the former roster does not in any way benefit or indicate um, or guarantee placement on this upcoming roster as well. If you applied and received a commission to a, a prior individual project, say you applied to a ship a ship canal waterways project that the, you applied to that specific call it does not demonstrate interest to us that you're interested in every project um, going forward um, and so we really as part of our process we really seek to to, uh, to match artists that are interested and have you know relevant background experience with the project at hand and so um um, admit, admittance to one does not necessarily have that correlation to interest in serving as this on this roster, and so that is why we ask you to reapply. Um, here's another question: If we're submitting as a team, do we submit one application together, or do we submit, to, or does each artist submit their own? I can take that. And so um, I would say if, if you are submitting as a team and you intend to work as a team, we encourage you to submit team images. Um, we want to be able to see. So if you have a scope of work um, that you can showcase, 
that way we invite you to do so. If you do seek to submit individual um, examples of your own work, please, please, please identify it as such in any sort of way um, in terms of the, those title descriptions. So the jury is able to designate and understand kind of the variety of um, point of views, artists, expressions that go into your team. I see another question of, do we know the areas of expertise of the jurors? How many visual artists and what medium? Um, we have not put together our, our selection panel yet. I will say generally, we will have a selection panel of five to seven individuals and we'll really look to um, bring a variety of voices to the table. But um, artists, um, different levels, experience, experience and emerging, as well as some arts administrators as well to be able to provide their voice, as well as um, representatives from our, um, our partner agencies in the city that will be able to provide um, input and background. There's another question that we have not done public art before, but make that work um, that would work well within public space. What should we emphasize in applications beyond this roster? Great. Are there other questions, Becky, Jason, that you see on the QA? I see people are putting um, comments in both of those spots. I would encourage you to do in the QA section. Anybody? Um, do you have specs for the images, pixels long, PPI, et cetera? Um, Submittable is a really robust system that um, allows for pretty large files. And so, especially if you choose to be on the publicly facing roster, I would um, do relatively large files versus small. Um, and you will be given, a, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head what the file limit is i think it's probably three to five megabytes um but you'll be given an error warning but there's no uh, distinctions on um like their, their specific size similar to other programs that we've used in the past um here's a question can our re can our references be someone from the office of arts and culture does someone else want to take that sure i can take that um i mean you can um, but I, I would say if you can, if you can find somebody else within you know, people, uh, organizations you've worked with, I would, I would, I would recommend using them over city staff. Again, we're, we're trying, you know, when, when we do our selections, um, we try not to have too much bias going in, whether it's positive or negative for an artist. And so we're trying, you know, try, just try to, try to be fair with all the other artists. We don't want to have someone included because I don't want to walk over to Maya's desk and, and say, hey, uh, so-and-so listed you as a reference. What do you think? And so I just, you know, I just feel as though, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to ask Maya last if you have three references. Um, I'll, I'll probably go with the other two just to kind of get a good, a good view. But I think I just I think just to kind of make sure that we're trying to be as fair as possible um that we try to avoid using city staff so i mean i i, I can understand if it's you know it, it maybe if you haven't done many projects in public art you may want to do that but i think if you can find others and i think I, I would recommend that first yeah i'll i'll underscore that and if if i were me as the project manager don't listen to me because i'd be um, managing this project <laughs> great um, I see another question. If we apply as a two member team and one of the members is established, should we apply as established? I would say that this is a great example of um, selecting if you choose to uh, um, apply as either emerging or established and using that additional text box to really showcase why. What will happen is like as soon as the application deadline passes, I will be taking next week to go through all of the application to check eligibility and reading each of those. Um, reading your application as well as that, that text box of further explanation. Um, if there are specific questions, I'll likely reach out to you. Um, but that is really kind of your opportunity to kind of showcase why you chose one over the other. Um, 
if it's if it's kind of unclear or on that kind of line in between those two. Um, there's one here, like, uh, sorry, I just lost it. Uh, here's a, here's a, a quick one. I was teaching a class where I was like, will this present presentation be made available online? Yes, we are recording as we speak. And so this, uh, the link will be uploaded um, by the end of the, or within the week um, that will be linked to the call itself and submittable. And so it will be available for you to re-review re and see that what you missed in case you did. There's a question again about clarification of the letter of interest. Would it mean the interest in being on the roster or focus on a particular future project. Um, I don't know what that might be. Um, talk about your interest of being on the roster and how you would like to work in the, pu the public field, the public art field with the Office of Arts and Culture. Um, that's the interest that we're looking for for this particular roster call. Yeah, and I would also, that was the question that I was looking at that disappeared. Um, I, would also, I would also add that, um, you know, part of being on the roster, we sometimes will uh, have a call out to artists specifically on the roster. And so there'll, there'll be an opportunity for artists if um, they are identified to apply for a specific project that we pull from the roster, or if we have a, a group of finalists that we want to pull from. So there'll be an opportunity for artists to uh, address a project if once, once those are, once those are available. But yeah, I think just to speak to what Rebecca said, just speak to about being on the roster and what you can bring to our program. Okay. I see a question here. Is it encouraged to keep a similar keep with a similar body of work or can can we submit a wide variety, say illustration, 2D, mosaic, illustrations? Does the wide variety come off as all over the place? Um, I would I would say in terms of recommendation that the roster will be used to kind of um, know a pro have a project and be able to use those images to be able to identify artists that might be um, except qual qualified interested in that project. And so I would recommend as part of the images that you upload, you really think about what kind of story you want to tell about yourself and what kind of projects you would like to be um, considered for in the future. If it is all over the place, if there's an illustration, a mosaic, it's really hard for the jury to be able to get a clear sense of who you are as an artist in terms of point of view um, and where you might want to go into the future. And so I would encourage you to think like think think through those examples and try and um, have some cohesion between them versus a wide variety of um, Seeming, seemingly unrelated images. And to piggyback on that, if there's a wide variety of things that you've done in the past, but you may not be working in that medium now or don't have an interest in working in that medium moving forward, I would not suggest adding as a work sample um, just so that we get an idea of where you're at now and what you would like to be working on. Okay. Another question. Field of applicants, do you expect? Um, we're never sure, but we I think we'll probably expect to see a couple hundred, maybe 500 applications to this. Um, we seek to um, we kind of have a general target of like two to two to three hundred individuals on the roster, um, and so that's kind of our general framework. But we won't know for sure until that application deadline closes. Uh, I see one here. Will selection panel represent the cultural diversity of our region? Uh, yes, I mean, we, we try to have balance on all of our selection panels, uh, everything from race and ethnicity to uh, gender, age. Uh, we're trying to kind of get a broad spectrum of, of people within our community to, to represent uh, you know, our, our, our selection panels. I mean, it's not necessarily a, a, going to be a direct uh, percentage because it's going to odd to get 6% of one person, you know, so, um, but yeah, we, we try to include it, you know, we want to make sure that we have uh, voices coming from BIPOC 
uh, artists and community members uh, and just get a range to make sure that we're getting a good, you know, good, good diversity of thoughts and attitudes. I see another question. Um, I am an artist with plans to create public art, but I haven't yet to date. Will there be an opportunity to be added to this roster after this application cycle, but before the next ro roster, which I assume won't be created until 2024? Um, and so within this roster, we do focus on opening it once um, every three years or so. So the application to this specific roster won't be again available until that time. That being said, we have a lot of other opportunities. This is the roster is one method of many or the, of which we seek artists. Um, we do open calls all the time um, in which we invite everyone to apply. That's a great way to um, be to be aware of the different opportunities that come forward. We also have a wide variety of training opportunities. We currently are um, have just done um, initiated public boot camp, public art boot camp that is a mentoring and training program that culminates in a small smaller scale temporary artwork um, either at the Seattle Center or in a neighborhood in association with art interruptions. Um, and so even if you haven't created, please like kind of keep on the radar the different opportunities that we have. I don't say public art, um, if you're interested in entering into the field, it doesn't necessarily Examples don't necessarily have to be created as part of a commission. Um, I've seen lots of applications in which artists were so inspired and did something in their front yard in a local park, guerrilla style. And so it like examples don't have to be uh, a fully commissioned um, by a public agency thing. I think it's something that you do on your own goes great lengths to speak to your interest in the field. Other questions? roster there is not and so um how the roster has been used and obviously it's all an internal database that hasn't been publicly accessible all at all and so that within this new iteration that is something that we're really excited about being able to offer um in terms of share, showcasing it with the community being able to use it as a reference tool to the wide variety of inquiries that we get from agencies businesses individuals that are looking to commission work um, but our current roster that expires at the end of this calendar year is an internal internally facing document we do um, share it with other agencies when asked but it's not it doesn't have any sort of link that has any sort of public um, publicly accessible way that being said um, Washington State Arts Commission our arts law does have their public art roster publicly accessible um, it's more of a list of names and locations um, that you can see there there's focus more focuses more on um, established artists, but you can kind of get a sense of that roster. Um, other agency as well, so if you Google um, pre-qualified roster, you can get a, kind of a wide sense of um, kind of industry, industry rosters that are available out there. Uh, we have a couple questions about how many, the number of artists selected. Do you want to address that? Uh, over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and so as, as I mentioned, we probably expect like 500 or so applications and we're looking for an overall pool of um, between two and 300. And so where that kind of distinction light lies of, um, of how many on each will, will kind of um, be determined by the selection panel as we go through the process, largely based on how many applications we receive. That target number. Maya, is there a one roster or are there are two rosters that are being established? Great question. And so for in so for internal use, so when we use when we have a project that's coming up and we know it is a budget of fifteen thousand dollars for a temporary artwork, we will use this roster internally to go to the emerging artists. Um, grouping um, and and go from that point. Within the online portal, there is no dis there is no distinction, and so everybody will be listed um, in terms of kind of those three categories of searches: artistic discipline, um, 
and the two others that I mentioned previously. And so publicly facing, there is no distinction between emerging and established. Internally, there is. And so in, in internally, as mentioned previously, it will really be up to the size of the project. So for projects, um, at $40,000 or below, we'll look to the emerging artist roster and above up to about $200,000, we'll be looking to the established. So it's really about the size of the project in which we um, are seeking to complete and find artists. But publicly facing, there will be no differentiation. Uh, we have one sort of a clarifying question regarding the references. So regarding the references, when you suggest not city staff, are you referring to boot camp staff? Seattle Center staff that cites temporary work. Um, yeah, so in my earlier answer, I was thinking more of you know art, you know office of arts and culture project managers uh, as a reference. I think you know uh, definitely for those if if you have had projects at at Seattle Center and you worked closely with their staff, um, then yeah, I think you know you can definitely list them. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking more of the project manager ma project managers within the office. Uh, there's a question about in, in real practice, do you find that private developers and art consultants use the artist pool to inform their work? Um, I, I can't really speak to that. I don't, I don't know. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, part of us making this available, we hope that this can open up some, you know, opportunities for all So we'll have to see, but I don't know if, uh, Rebecca or Maya, if you have any thoughts on that. In previous jobs, we've had rosters too when I've worked in um, in public facing interfaces as well, and we've shared that information or encouraged people. We've gotten inquiries, but I can't speak to how many artists may have gotten additional opportunities based on that specific roster. Yeah, um, one one of the rationales as well as it having this be publicly facing um, as, as as a city agency providing recommendations for either businesses or um, individuals is ch is challenging and there's some kind of legal implications and so by being able to provide this information as this is our our pre-selected roster for our project that we use internally, we're not necessarily recommending one individual, but we're providing all this information is. Um, is a way that we can support the artist community without kind of violating that direct recommendation rule. Um, and so as well as just to be able to kind of provide a, um, a, a, a platform to showcase the excellent diversity of work that's being created in our area and across the nation. Um, another question is, if we were commissioned with the design and manufacturing of a project, but not the installation, would that project qualify for the submission? Um, I'd say yes, um, especially if you were um, in charge of the design portion. Um, that, would, I, that would be a great example of in which, as part of the image description, you would designate that you were the design team and not necessarily the installation. I'd also mention too that within kind of the budget um, commissioning amount, there is a lot of variability. Some artists are just commissioned for the design, um, and that budget might be much smaller than the overall. Like, so you were, for instance, um, commissioned for ten thousand dollars for the design, um, but then the overall installation was like fifty or sixty thousand dollars. That would be a really great example of what in choosing emerging versus established to be really able to kind of flesh out that information, um, because there's commissions. And their commissioning amount do come in all kind of variations of um, what is what you've actually received and what's actually created. Um, and so there's a we recognize that it's not a you know a very not everything is rigid within kind of the definitions that we pro provided. And so we want to provide the opportunity to kind of showcase and allow for variation. Uh, there's one question I'm not quite sure, but you know, asking if there's a policy to minority artists. So, friend, 
uh, make sure that I understand that correctly, but I think maybe just sort of like a policy towards accepting or, uh, I mean, we don't, you know, we, we don't um, comply with any sort of affirmative action policy because it's, it's actually illegal in Washington. But, you know, when we do make selections, I mean, we want to have a measure that we have a, 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 a diverse selection panel, but just knowing that, you know, we are selecting artists who can speak to a very broad and diverse community. And so we want to make sure that we have artists within our roster who we know that if we are going to one specific community, um, that there might be artists that have an understanding of the, the culture and the history so that you know there, there's definitely alignment within that. So we want to make sure that we have a very broad and diverse pool so that we can, you know, again, speak to our city, speak to our time. All right. I see one other question, like how many projects are expected to be able to place the applicants at any time? So how many projects do we think will be um, roster projects, both for emerging and experience? I mean, I, I think we're not sure. This is kind of an interesting point in time that we find ourselves at. Um, I would speak to past rosters um, that for, for temporary projects, there are probably more than um, a step as larger scale projects. Um, but and Jason, please correct me on this. But I think in the past three years, we've probably had seven roster projects, larger scale, and probably ten to fifteen for temporary works. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely changed. Uh, you know, with different different circumstances. Um, you know, when we first we had our first roster a few years ago, um, we didn't use it all that much because it was more of a um, more of when we have a challenging timeline that we could we could you know either select an artist or get a pool of artists rather quickly. Um, you know, definitely in the COVID era that we're now living in, uh, there's been a much greater emphasis on uh the roster and so yeah i mean it's it's definitely changed quite a bit um i think we're using it more but you know, the actual numbers I, I yeah i don't can't think specifically but i think you know somewhere around what you had for the larger projects seemed about right and then we've a lot of the parties we've done this year like public art in your front yard uh essentially seattle uh you know, I think we've 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 relied more heavily on uh, our roster to kind of look for artists so that we can move quickly. Great, and so it is just about well, it is exactly noon. Um, are there any other kind of outstanding questions in the chat or Q and A that Becky or Jason you see that hasn't been spoken to? There's one that just popped in. It says, are the project ideas or calls for an art generated by you in our office or by businesses and organizations looking for work? And Jason, do you want to kind of speak to how we select projects? Yeah, so I mean, all of our percent for art projects are city projects. And so I mean, unlike other cities that might have might work with private development, we, we do not. Um, and so everything that we do, we develop with our city partners, which uh, with their, with their capital improvement dollars and construction. So the Seattle Department of Transportation, Seattle City Light, Seattle Public, Seattle Public Utilities, Parks and Rec. So we work with our city partners with their percent for art dollars to create projects. And so they're usually based on what their projects are and some alignment there. But um, yeah, so I mean, it, it's all it's all developed within the city uh, for all our city projects. And there's nothing that we do with, with private development. Great. Well, um, wonderful. Thank you, everybody, so much for your project, and thank you so much for your time and your really great questions. Um, my, inform my information is um, part of the call 
um, on our website as well as part of this recording. If you do have any follow up questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, please remember the deadline of November 30th, but please apply early um, and um, thank thank you um, and really appreciate your interest and um, are, are, are excited to work with you. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you.